Okay, so what I want to do real quick is a simple Nano Tetris development setup for macOS. At the time of recording, I'm using macOS Ventura. It's the latest variant out right now. But if you're using an older run, that should be fine. And even if you're using a newer one going forward, including a ARM-based M1, M2, or anything else that comes out after that, it should also be fine because almost everything here is written for a interpreted language like Java or Python, so you should generally be fine. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. So, first things first, we have a Git repo that I maintain. It's just a collection of a bunch of links to software that I use for my actual environment. So, we have the actual YouTube playlist, which is where this video is located. We have a link to the Nano Tetris website. This is what the actual course is based on. I have some alterations, which is why I have these two links here. These are links for a Nano Tetris suite that I have modified. I have added a few projects, taken a lot of the latter ones out because this is under a time restraint and I think it's seven and eight are using a custom macro assembler, which is why we will need Python eventually. More on that in a bit. The next one here is called Nando Zip. This is some software I've written. If you're not taking this class with me, you don't have to worry about it. But this will be covered in a different video. And the main three we really care about here, besides the software, is OpenJDK, Python, and sort of VS Code. But for now, OpenJDK, we need that because we need Java runtime. The Nando Touch Suite was written in Java, you can find the source code on the Nantech website if you do some scouring. But I have two links. It is, well, the actual variant I use is the Eclipse Foundation's Adoptian, it's called Tamarin OpenJDK. I have an Intel x64, it's x8664, but it's one of the older Macs. If you're using the newer ones, that are like M1, M2, whatever else comes after that past this recording, you'll want the ARM variant. So older, you're going to want the Intel, and then newer ones, you're going to want the ARM. Then we need Python. There is a universal installer. It can be done on the Intel or the ARM one, not a big deal. Now I know there is an actual bundled version of Python that comes with macOS. I believe a recording for Ventura, it's 3.9.6, and that is perfectly fine. I generally just like having the latest version of Python install my systems. It just keeps things consistent and concise. But I think as long as you're using something past 3.8, it should be fine. Now, again, it does do Python 3. Python 2 will not work. Keep that in mind. And then finally, VS Code. Now, this is just the text header that I recommend. You can use whatever you want. If you're more comfortable with, say, something like Vim, or Emacs, Sublime, something like that, you're more than welcome to use it. If VS Code has a few plugins that I like because they're geared towards Nano Tetris. That's why one reason I like to use it. It's cross-platform is another reason, so it keeps things pretty portable. Now, the only thing that I generally discourage is either something that's way too simple or your structure like basic notepad or a full-on IDE. So something like Visual Studio Community, UT Creator, anything from JetBrains. These can try to mess with files that you really don't want. There's a lot of project files, system files in the Nantesha suite that the user has no business messing with. You look at them, interact with them, and just kind of understand how they work, but you should not be altering anything inside of them. I've had some students in the past that had an entire project corrupt because and I assume this is the IE doing it because it, it converted, I don't know if it converted is the right word, but it basically messed with the actual contents of the file. It was a bunch of binary gibberish. It wasn't something like you went in and like just made a few typos or something and messed with it the way you should have. It just completely overrode it. So be careful if you decide to use a full on IDE, they can do things that you really don't want them to. So just a simple text editor, code editor, whatever you want to call it, is all you need here. And I just, I use VS Code, so. With all that being said, let's go ahead and do a few downloads. So we want the software, we want Nano Tetris Mac OS slash Linux. This is just the Unix variant. I have two tweaked versions of Nano Tetris, and it's just because 
the Windows version uses batch scripts, the Unix version uses uh, bash scripts. Yeah, they're very similar, so they're just two different shells. Doesn't matter. This is what we want. If you're using macOS, Linux, or any other Unix system, this is what you want. We will also want... I'm using an x86 system, so I want this one. Let's open JDK. And then I want Python. And then I want the x64 variant of VS Code. So we want these four. Once they're all downloaded, we'll go ahead and open that in Binder. It opens here on the other screen, don't know why. But... These four files right here. This is exactly what I want. So OpenJDK, Python 3.5, VS Code, and Nano Tetris. Now before I start doing anything, we want to type in for Spotlight. Also, if you don't want to open Spotlight, I think it's uh, Command, Space. I'm not good with Mac OS shortcuts, but there's also a magnifying glass here in the top right that you can use. And I hit this. Terminal, Binder, Open. We're going to zoom in just so we can kind of see a little easier. We're going to see if Java is installed. It's not. So if we do Java Maps version, then it's going to try to tell us what version of Java is installed in our system. And here it says the operation completed, unable to get a Java runtime. That just means Java is not installed in my system. So we'll fix that by installing it. And now if you look at Python 3, my Python 3. So you have 3.9.6 just because that's what comes bundled with mac os so i'm going to keep this open just going to clear it out we're going to do open jdk it says we run through an installer the defaults are fine the license agreement should be gpl this makes sure you're installing this in the proper system mine says mac os temp just because this is a testing environment that i do for these videos um, if it was my main system, it'd say Mac OS, just because that's what the actual disk is named. So just make sure you're installing it to the right disk and you should be good to go. So install, do our password. Yes, I'd like to access files in the download folder. I'm gonna write files, validate it, and it's good to go. That was a lot faster than I thought it was playing. So move to crash. And if we do Java minus minus version now, so we have OpenJDK 20.0.2. Again, if you have a newer version from this recording, I'm going to keep all these links updated. The moment that a version of Java releases that does not work with Nano Tetris, I will stop updating and I will keep it at the latest version that properly supports it. So if you're watching the video and it's been like two years, the links will be updated. I'm going to make sure this try and, and runs as smoothly as possible. Next, we want Python. Again, you don't have to do this one. I just do it for clarity and again, I just like to have the latest version of Python. So all the same thing, just the defaults. Make sure it's the right disk. Install and then give it access from Dallas folder. And this one usually takes a little bit longer. It might not take too long for me. It's not quite done here that's done I'm gonna exit out this uh, not this here it is and this one we're gonna close and move to trash okay now if I do Python 3 minus minus version you see now we have it properly updated so we have the latest version of Java we have the latest version of Python Go ahead and start. So let's go ahead and get VS Code installed. All right, so it just un unzips the actual blonde binary. We'll just click and drag that over to Applications. And that's it for that. So open up Spotlight again. Visual Studio Code. We're going to open that. Yes, open from the internet. And you'll say we have no open folders or anything like that. Uh, we'll keep it open for right now. So now, I want to take this and I want to move it to my documents folder. Over there, I have some pretty existing documents from a different project, but now I want to extract this. Now it's in its own folder. And I have access to this project tools folder. 
I want to open this directory, this Nanda Tetris directory, in VS Code. So I'm just going to do open folder, go to documents, click Nanda Tetris, and over here I have project and tools. This is exactly what I want, this Nanda Tetris directory. So I'm going to open it. You can see now I have the projects and my tools folder. So if I open a project, you'll see one through eight. That's perfectly fine. You can see we have a bunch of AND files, N16s, CMP, HCL, TST files. Perfect. We have tools. You'll notice we have just .sh files or no .bats. If you were on Windows system, you'll see BATs. So if you see that right now, you download the wrong version. But we're almost done. What I want to do real quick, I'm going to exit out of my screen. I want to right click on tools. I want to open and integrate a terminal. And then I want to run ls minus l. What you're going to notice here, we have all of those files that you just saw right over here in this listing. Look over the far left and you see the permissions they have. They all have read write permissions, but there is no this, this x right here that you see in these directories. That is the executable bit. We need to set that in order to run this software. Do that with a simple command, chmod plus x. I'm going to do asterisk. That's going to be a catch all. It means everything. And I'm going to end it with .sh. So every file that ends in .sh is going to have chmod plus x applied to it. Now I'm going to clear again. ls minus l. You notice now all of them have the executable bit set. That is exactly what we want, which means we can actually run the software now. Before we do that, just sanity check. Dot minus minus version. We have OpenJDK. Python 3 minus minus version. We have Python 3.11.5. Exactly what we want. Clear it out. Now, what I want to do. Go ahead and exit out of this. Since I have the Nano Tetris as my root folder for this project, I have access to projects. I have access to tools right here. So I want to just open a new terminal, and it's going to open it in the actual Nano Tetris directory. So now, if I run ls minus l, you'll see I have projects and tools, which are the two directories I have here. What I want to do is you dot slash the current directory. So I'm in tools and hit tab, up auto complete. And then from tools, real quick, I want to try and run hardware seminar SH. That's the first piece of the GUI software we're going to use to the course. So enter. And there we go. If you see this window pop up, that means you are good to go for starting the actual Nano Tetris suite and starting the actual projects. Now I'm not going to go over the actual software right now. I'm going to have a separate video actually doing a program for the actual project one. So I'll have a lot more details there. And I will say the software here has a lot to be desired. I will show that off in the next video. You can also do it through command line like I have been over here. And that's how I'm going to do most of it because it's far less buggy than the GUI. But if you do see this, you're good to go. You can go ahead and start. We're good. Now, one last thing for VS Code that I talked about earlier, this extension right here. I want to type in NAND Tetris. You'll see a long list of these. There's a good bit of these. The one that I'll recommend, and the one I'm going to install is this one from Lewis. I believe that Nanda Tetris snippets down here is also pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and do this one from Lewis just because it works really good for me. If you want to try any of these other ones, you're more than welcome to. But for now, I'm going to install this and show you one thing that it changes, how you know it's done. So we're going to select Nanda Tetris theme here and I'll exit out and we come over here. But notice that the icons have changed. They are now a bit more appropriate to the actual projects and everything if we open everything up it would have syntax highlighting but i don't want to show it off just yet i'm going to save that for the next video we have java installed python installed well kind of updated 
We have a text editor, we have the actual GUI working, and we have a really nice extension. So we are perfectly good and set up to start the actual Nano Tetris course. So that's it. That's good for actual setup. Good to go. I hope this was helpful. I've learned something. I'll see you next video.